So you have an elevated PSA. What should you do? Meet Joe. Joe is 60 years old. He has an elevated PSA. What does that mean? Does he have prostate cancer? Should he be concerned? What should he do? He's heard a lot of talk about PSA and about whether or not he should even have it tested and about whether or not it's even accurate. He's also heard a lot of talk about prostate biopsy and how well um, not fun it can be. He's not very excited about the thought of having a biopsy. He's also heard a lot about prostate cancer and how it's often slow growing and doesn't need to be treated. So he wonders if he should even bother doing anything at all. He really just wants to play golf or fish or really do anything else that's not related to his prostate. If you're watching this, you're probably like Joe. You might have an elevated PSA, or perhaps your PSA is normal, but it's rising quicker than it should. If that's the case, keep watching. I'm here to help you. When we're finished, you'll have a very clear understanding of what you should do and why. Hi there, I'm Dr. Tracy Gappin. I'm a board certified urologist and the founder of Sarasota Prostate Care. I have nearly 20 years of experience in urology with a special focus on prostate cancer diagnosis and treatment. My practice is here in sunny Sarasota, Florida. With such an elderly population here, I certainly take care of a lot of men with elevated PSA and prostate cancer. Hopefully today, I can help you understand what it means to have an elevated PSA, and most importantly, what you should do about it. Now let's talk about PSA. What is it? PSA stands for prostatic specific antigen. It's an enzyme or protein made by the prostate. It actually has no purpose or function. It's just a blood test used in men as a screening tool for prostate cancer. It's also used to monitor men who've undergone prior prostate cancer treatment to assess their response. Now PSA has been done since the early 1990s when it was found to be a good indicator or a warning sign for prostate cancer. Prior to that, the only way to screen for men for prostate cancer was a digital rectal exam. Now we rely on both, the PSA and an exam. Normal PSA is under 3.5, but for younger men, it should be much lower than that. PSA also should not rise more than 0.5 from one year to the next. This is called the PSA velocity. We monitor both the PSA level as well as the PSA velocity. So what causes an elevated PSA? Well, three things. First, prostate enlargement, or what we call BPH. Two, a prostate infection or inflammation, also called prostatitis. Or three, prostate cancer. That's it. If your PSA is elevated, it's either BPH, prostatitis, or cancer. One of those three. The obvious question is, which one is it? That's the million dollar question. So how do we find out which one it is? Now we're getting to the real issue here. So first we rule out infection. This can be done with a simple urine test and a clinical history. But what if it's not an infection? What now? Most importantly, how do we figure out if it's cancer? For decades, the universal recommendation by almost all urologists for men with an elevated PSA would be to undergo a prostate biopsy. It's important for you to understand what's involved with this. So let's get back to Joe for a moment. Joe undergoes a standard prostate biopsy by laying on his left side in the fetal position. We insert an ultrasound probe into the rectum and we visualize the prostate that you see there in the picture is the small orange organ. It looks like this, what we call a big gray blob. There it is. Can you see anything concerning? Any sign of cancer? You know what? Neither can I. Sometimes we see areas that might look abnormal, and sometimes color Doppler may be helpful. But for the most part, normally ultrasound does not show us prostate cancer. Typically, cancer and normal tissue will look identical on ultrasound. This is really critical important that you understand this concept. So why do we even bother with ultrasound at all? Well, it's simply used to guide the biopsy. It shows us where the prostate is, and it's all we've had. It's been the only way to see the prostate, that is, up until now. So, how is the biopsy done? Well, the ultrasound probe is in the rectum, again, 
and you see the prostate there in orange. The biopsy is done by advancing needles through the ultrasound probe into the prostate through the rectal wall. Now remember, we cannot see any detail within the prostate to know where to aim. So it's a blind approach. It's like blindfolded darts. Put another way, we are sticking needles into your prostate, hoping to hit a cancer if it's even there. I'm going to repeat this because this is probably the most important point of this entire presentation. We are sticking needles into your prostate, hoping to hit a cancer if it's even there. My analogy for this is sticking needles into a watermelon, hoping to hit a seed. Sounds pretty ridiculous, doesn't it? Well, it is. There is simply no other organ in the body for which it is considered acceptable to randomly stick needles into, hoping to find a cancer if it's even there. In this day and age, with all the technology we have, this sounds pretty archaic and old school to me, because it really is. Prostate biopsy has had a bad reputation. It's not very pleasant. It can be uncomfortable or painful even. Uh, there's a small risk of developing an infection. But in my opinion, the bigger problem with it is that it is completely random and may completely miss a prostate cancer. In fact, up to 30% of prostate cancers can be missed. That's right, 30% of cancers are missed with a standard prostate biopsy. So you can go through all the joys of a prostate biopsy and we could completely miss a cancer. There's got to be a better way, right? Absolutely. It's called image guidance with prostate MRI. Now prostate MRI has come a long way in terms of technology. It used to look like this. This is the prostate right here. Now it looks like this. You can very clearly see the prostate here now. We now use what's called multi-parametric MRI. This means we use multiple sequences which show us the prostate through different filters. Here you see a T2 image on the left. You see a dynamic contrast enhanced image on the right and you see a diffusion weighted image in the middle. And each of those three filters show us different ways of looking at the prostate. With these filters, we get very different valuable pieces of information as well. Now to understand the internal architecture of the prostate, this is really critical. It's obviously a huge improvement over prior technology. MRI can show us spots in the prostate that may be suspicious for cancer, like this one here. So back to Joe, he gets a prostate MRI. It looks like this. There's a suspicious area here at the top of the prostate or the anterior part of the prostate. On all three sequences you can see that abnormality. The spot's very likely to be prostate cancer, but it's not definitive. If he had a standard prostate biopsy, this spot would very likely be missed almost every time. So what does Joe do now? Joe needs what's called an MRI ultrasound 3D fusion biopsy. I know that's a mouthful. We call this also a fusion biopsy or a targeted biopsy. This means that we use the MRI images to obtain a very precise biopsy focusing or targeting on the suspicious areas that we're seeing. So how do we do that exactly? There are a number of commercially available devices that we use to do this. Uh, these are the two most commonly used machines. The, the Uranav is on the left and the Artemis is on the right. Uh, I currently use the Uranav. Uh, here's how the actual procedure works. So Joe lays on his left side in the fetal position again, just like a standard biopsy. Now some urologists will perform this procedure with the patient awake using a uh, prostate block with local anesthetic, typically lidocaine. I perform a fusion biopsy with IV propofol sedation. So my patients take a 10 to 15 minute nap and they experience absolutely no pain. The ultrasound probe is inserted and Joe's prostate is visualized, just like a standard prostate biopsy. Now remember, any spots that we saw in the MRI are basically invisible with ultrasound. So how do we know where to biopsy? This is the critical step that distinguishes this from a standard biopsy. At this point, we will merge or fuse the real-time ultrasound images, which are shown up here at the top of the screen, 
with the previously obtained MRI images at the bottom of the screen. And now we can very clearly see the area of concern real time on the monitor. Right here, you'll see a bullseye. We can now obtain multiple needle core biopsies of this very precise exact spot in the prostate that would have likely been completely missed with a standard non-targeted biopsy. So back to Joe. He wakes up from the procedure with no pain at all. He's given antibiotics for a few days, just like a standard prostate biopsy, to minimize any risk of infection. We will then meet in a few days to go over the biopsy results. He may have some blood in the urine, stool, and semen for a little while, but otherwise the risks of the procedure are extremely low. Without question, this cutting-edge approach allows me to better visualize the internal anatomy of the prostate and greatly improve the accuracy of prostate biopsy. Basically, if there's a cancer, I am much better equipped to find it with this technology. I'm not going to blindly stick needles into your prostate hoping to find something if it's even there. In another talk, I'll highlight some details of the extensive published scientific research that has proven very clearly the tremendous benefit of this approach using prostate MRI and MRI-guided fusion biopsy to improve our detection of prostate cancer. Now, some men will question whether we should go through this process at all. They say, why bother? Because a lot of cancers are slow growing and perhaps they don't need to be treated. The problem with that mindset and a very important concept to understand is that not all prostate cancers are the same. Some cancers are not aggressive and can be managed with active surveillance where we monitor them closely but don't treat them unless they progress. Other cancers are lethal and need aggressive therapy to prevent spread and ensure long-term survival. In another talk, I'll go into great detail about the different types of prostate cancer, how differently they behave, and thus how differently they need to be treated. But in general, the key point here is that you need to know what kind of cancer you're dealing with before you can make any intelligent decision about how to manage it. And without tissue, i.e. without a tissue prostate biopsy, we just don't know. You cannot rely on imaging alone for this diagnosis. I tell my patients all the time, let's see what you have, then decide what treatment, if any, is right for you. So in summary, if you have an elevated PSA, we need to know why. And the best way to do that is with prostate MRI and MRI-guided targeted prostate biopsy. Thanks and have a great day.